Welcome to Mrs. V's Reading Corner, where you can enjoy books for educational, fun, or even bedtime stories. Please take the time to like this video, comment below with how you enjoyed it, book suggestions, and more. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get all the new books that I post first. Dangerous Creatures by Angela Wilkes Chapter 3 Small but Deadly When people think about dangerous creatures, the first ones that come to mind are the large carnivores. Yet, some of the tiniest creatures are just as frightening and even more dangerous. Many people swarm at the thought of creepy crawlies and the sight of a scorpion with its tail raised or a large. Hairy spider is enough to make anyone shake with fear. Although many scorpions and spiders are harmless, some of them are very deadly. Other small creatures have become legendary for being lethal. Piranhas are famous for tearing their victims apart within minutes. And vampire bats are linked to legends of blood-sucking monsters that come out at night. In fact, the biggest killer of all are also the smallest. The mosquito kills millions of people each year by spreading malaria. Other insects spread many horrible diseases. These insects are all tiny, but they are responsible for many more deaths than sharks, crocodiles, or snakes. Small but deadly. Just like bigger animals, small predators have a whole arsenal of deadly weapons at their disposal. They may not be able to rely on muscle power, but they can bite, sting, suck their victim's blood, or even burrow under their skin. Being small allows animals to be stealthier. Many tiny creatures rest during the day and are active at night. Scorpions, spiders, bats, rats, and mosquitoes all emerge from their hiding places to search for food under the cover of darkness. Unlike these tiny creatures, humans cannot see very well in the dark and are usually asleep at night anyway. Many people are terrified by the thought of spiders in the bathtub scorpions hiding in shoes, or bats getting tangled up in their hair. There is little they can do to defend themselves against these small creatures, and that is what can make them so frightening. Dangerous Teeth Animals do not have to be large to have a dangerous bite. Piranhas are only 12 inches but they are armed with powerful jaws and fierce teeth. One piranha on its own may not be able to kill an animal, but a school of piranhas can. Vampire bats use their razor sharp front teeth to make cuts in their victim's skin so that they can suck their blood. Rats are equipped with amazing strong teeth that can gnaw through most things. Potent poisons. Many tiny creatures use venom to subdue or kill their prey or to defend themselves from attack. Spiders have poisonous fangs. Scorpions wield a vicious stinger at the end of their tails. And bees use their venomous stingers as the ultimate form of defense. In some cases, a spider's or scorpion's venom is stronger than that of a snake, a much bigger animal. Spreading disease. Many insects, such as mosquitoes, sea sea flies, 
and fleas are not poisonous themselves, but they kill millions of humans and livestock each year by spreading infectious diseases whenever they bite. All of these insects feed on the blood of animals or people. Once they have become infected with a disease, as a result of feeding from an infected animal or person, they pass it on to any other creature they feed from. Small as they are, these insects really are deadly, and there is little that people can do to prevent them from spreading infections. Sinister Spiders Many people are terrified of spiders. All spiders have a poisonous bite, but they use it to subdue or kill their prey. Most of the 50,000 or so species of spiders are harmless to humans. But a few are dangerous. Their bites can cause long-lasting wounds and can even lead to death if they are not treated with an antivenom promptly. Hairy Giants Goliath tarantulas, the biggest spiders of all, have a leg span of 11 inches, so the largest are the size of dinner plates. They are found throughout South America in tropical rainforests and hunt small animals. Goliath tarantulas only bite people in defense as a last resort. If they feel threatened, they release a cloud of tiny bob hairs that work their way into a person's skin and cause severe irritation. Black Widow Spiders The Black Widow is considered the most venomous spider in North America with venom that is 15 times more poisonous than that of a prairie rattlesnake. In fact, like most spiders, the black widow eats insects. The female usually hides upside down in her web. When an insect gets caught in the web, the spider bites holes in its body and sucks out the insides. Only the female black widow is poisonous. The males and spiderlings are harmless, but the spider's bite is not usually fatal to humans because the spider injects only a small amount of venom. Black widows have the name because of the belief that the female black widow kills and eats their male spider once she has made it. This only happens occasionally. Funnel web spider. The Sydney funnel web is the most dangerous spider of all. Its fangs are strong enough to push through a fingernail and its venom is powerful enough to kill a human. Unless they are treated with anti-venom quickly, the spider is found in the suburbs around Sydney, Australia and the males often come into contact with people when searching for a mate. Like Goliath tarantulas, the funnel web rears up to strike so that it can stab its fangs downward. Its venom attacks the nervous system, paralyzing the muscles and causing severe breathing difficulties. Cunning web, as the name suggests, the entrance to a funnel web spider web is shaped like a funnel and leads down into a barrel lined with spider silk. The spider also spins long strands of silk that stretch out from the entrance of the web, like a rope that secures a tent. These strands act like trip wires. The spider hides just inside the entrance to its burrow, waiting for prey. As soon as a frog, lizard, or insect trips on one of the threads, the spider feels the vibration and rushes out on the hole to seize its victim. The brown recluse spider found in the United States is just over 0.4 inches long. It looks harmless, 
but its venom is a lethal mixture of chemicals that destroy body tissues and cause painful ulcers that do not heal. The spider often bites people, but deaths are rare. A goliath tarantula sinks its large fangs into a mouse. To attack, it rears up and then strikes downward, injecting venom into the prey with fangs that are 0.4 inches long, as known as gigantic bird spiders. They eat young birds that they drag from their nest. The Sydney funnel web fangs drip with venom when it is about to strike. Only 0.28 inches long, the fangs are enormous in relation to the size of the spider's head and are sharp enough to pierce the skull of a small animal. Only the male funnel web's venom is harmful to humans. A toxic mixture of acids and nerve poisons, it is made in venom glands behind the spider's fangs. The female black widow is shiny black in color with a reddish hourglass shape on the underside of her abdomen. The male is only about half her size with a smaller body and longer legs. A Sydney funnel web spider hides in its web. As soon as an insect trips on one of the trip wires, the spider attacks. Stinger in the tail. The sight of a scorpion hiding in a shoe or scuttling across the bathroom floor strikes fear into the hearts of most people. All scorpions are poisonous and despite being small, some of them produce venom that is powerful enough to kill a person. Scorpions are arachnids, so they belong to the same animal family as spiders, ticks, and mites. Like other arachnids, they have jointed legs, but they also have giant piercers and a segmented tail with a poisonous stinger at the tip. There are around 1,500 different kinds of scorpions living around the world, but only 25 of them are dangerous to humans. Night Prowler Scorpions are thought of as desert creatures, but in fact, they are found in several other habitats as well, from grasslands to rainforests, the African fat-tailed scorpion, the most dangerous scorpion to humans, originally lived in shallow burrows or under rocks in northern Africa. As its territories have become more built up, however, it has moved into people's homes. It especially likes damp places, such as bathrooms, where there are lots of insects to catch. During the mating season, male scorpions will often wander into houses searching for females. They find hiding places under beds and in other nooks and crannies. Like all scorpions, the fat-tailed scorpion is a predator and hunts soft-bodied prey such as spiders, centipedes, cockroaches, beetles, and even other scorpions. It catches animals in its pinchers and then stings the victim to stun it. Some scorpions have such powerful pinchers that they can crush their prey and do not need to sting it. Small scorpions with weaker pinchers, however, use their venom so they can catch prey as large as they are. Scorpions also use their stingers to defend themselves. The fat-tailed scorpion's venom is as strong as a cobra's, but the reason it is dangerous is that its tail is strong enough to pierce through clothes and even shoes. The scorpion strikes several times, so it is able to inject large amounts of venom into its attacker. It is thought to kill 250 to 400 people a year.
in Tunisia in Northern Africa. Death Stalker. The scorpion with the most potent venom of all is Palestine Yellow Scorpion, sometimes known as the Death Stalker. It does not inject very much venom at a time, but the actual poison is much more powerful of that of a cobra. Found in deserts and other dry habitats in Asia, the pale stained yellow scorpion hides in small natural burrows or under stones. Its venom is a powerful mixture of neurotoxins, poison that affects the nervous system. Unless the victim is treated quickly, the anti-venom the scorpion sting leads to coma, convulsions, and fever. The victim will usually die of heart failure or breathing difficulties. When a scorpion feels threatened or is about to attack, it opens both of its front claws and raises its tail. A scorpion's tail is very flexible. It is made up of five separate segments with a bulb-shaped part called the telson at the end. If the prey is difficult to grip, the scorpion carefully arches its stinger forward over its back to aim at the soft spot on its victim, such as a joint. Each type of scorpion has venom that works on animals to eat, such as insects or crustaceans. The scorpion jabs its tail into the prey and ejects a dose of venom. It rocks the stinger back and forth to work its way into the victim's flesh. Meanwhile, muscles around the scorpion's venom glands contract, squeezing the poison through hollow stingers into the prey. At the tip of the fat-tailed scorpion's tail, there is a swollen bulb-shaped segment ending in a long, sharp, hollow spine. Inside the bulb are two venom sacs full of poison. Muscles attached to the base of the bulb move the sting backwards and forward. Unlike most scorpions, the Palestine yellow scorpion has both slender claws and a narrow tail. Other scorpions have either huge claws or a fat tail. Fierce fish. Piranhas have the reputation of being the world's fiercest fish. Terrifying stories tell of people falling into the Amazon River in South America and being stripped of all their flesh within minutes, amidst waters swarming with angry fish. It is true that piranhas are armed with frightening jaws and sharp teeth. But of only 20 to 26 different species of piranhas, only four may be dangerous to humans, and even then, only in certain situations. In fact, no case has ever been recorded of anyone having been killed by piranhas. Tropical Home Piranhas are only found in South America. From Venezuela down to Argentina, they live in large, slow-moving rivers, such as the Amazon, that flow through the tropical rainforest in the Atlantic Ocean. Despite their reputation, piranhas have wide-ranging appetites. Most of them eat fruits and seeds, or take small bites out of the fins and scales of other fish, which soon grow back. The most dangerous of the species are the red-bellied piranhas. Underwater predators. Red-bellied piranhas are carnivores. The young piranhas eat insects and small crustaceans, while the adults eat birds, rodents, and other mammals, frogs, and reptiles. Red-bellied piranhas are only dangerous when water levels are low and food is scarce. This makes them more aggressive. They are not scavengers, 
and only eat fresh meat. Red belly piranhas are unlikely to attack strong animals moving steadily through the water. Instead, they target weak, drowning, or wounded animals that are struggling and splashing. And for the kill, piranhas do not really work together as an organized team. Each fish works as an individual predator. However, being in a group means that the fish can attack much bigger animals, such as tapirs and capybaras, than they could on their own. If one fish is attracted by the splashes of an animal in distress and swims towards it, the rest follow. They gather around the victim, and a smaller fish dart forward to take a few small test bites. If they are successful, the older, the large fish join in, and they all take lightning quick bites out of the prey. A piranha's powerful jaws snap shut just like a mousetrap. It can't chew, so it only uses its teeth to cut and bite, and then swallows each mouthful of food whole. Red belly piranhas turn sideways in the water when they bite, revealing their gleaming red bellies. If an animal becomes distressed when it is bitten, the piranhas go wild. They twist and turn in the water, biting so fast that the water looks like it is boiling. In a frenzy like this, the piranhas can strip their victim of all of its flesh within minutes leaving behind nothing but bare bones. Piranhas only mount a serious attack when they are swimming in a school. They swim just below the surface of the water with all their senses alert for signs of movement or disturbance that might signal prey. As with most animals, the front teeth of a fish provide vital clues about what it eats. The red belly piranha has powerful, deep jaws, a flat surface, and a mouthful of thin triangular teeth as sharp as knife blades. These teeth can slice through an animal's flesh easily, each bite leaving a crescent-shaped cut about the width of an adult's thumb. The Amazon is one of the longest rivers in the world. For most of its length, it is slow moving and muddy, providing ideal conditions for piranhas. Many different animals live in the rainforest bordering the river. When they come to the river to drink, they may fall victim to the piranhas. Killer bees. Africanized honeybees look very similar to their relatives, the well loved European honeybees. However, they are much more aggressive and attack anyone approaching their nest, earning them the name killer bees. Since arriving in South America in the 1950s, they have rapidly spread north into the U.S. without anyone being able to slow down their progress. Bees from Africa Africanized honeybees as their name suggests, are not native to South America. In 1956, a professor working at a university in Brazil took 63 queen bees from Africa to Brazil. He wanted to breed a new type of honeybee that could produce a lot of honey in the tropical climate of Brazil. And African honeybees had the most productive colonies he had found. Some of the queen bees escaped and bred with local bees, creating a new type of bee, the Africanized honeybee. These bees were similar in many ways to their African ancestors. They were aggressive and quick to take over the hive of local bees. Even more worrying, however, was that they were ferocious when it came to defending their hives. So much so that many beekeepers gave up beekeeping completely. 
The bees had very few natural enemies in South America, so they flourished in their new environment and began spreading. By 1986, they had reached Mexico, and now they have settled in the southern states of the U.S. as well. Swarming Bees Like other honeybees, Africanized honeybees live in large colonies. Every once in a while, a colony flies away to find a new nesting site. While waiting for a scout to find a good place, the whole colony rests on a tree or house in a huge mass called a swarm. European honeybees may only swarm once each year, but Africanized honeybees form swarms six to 12 times each year. The bees often build their nests in man-made objects such as holes or cracks in buildings, under mobile homes, in sheds, or in log piles. This brings them into close contact with people. They build smaller nests than European bees because the climate is warmer and they do not need to store honey in their hives over the winter. However, the bees attack and sting any person or animal that approaches their nest. Like other bees, they die as soon as they have stung something, so they sting as a means of defense only. The bees can chase for up to one third of a mile. As a bee stings the attacker, it gives off a warning scent, calling other bees to join in the attack. Even bees from other colonies can join in, so there could be thousands of bees all together. Each bee sting is no stronger than a bee sting from another species of bee such as the European honeybee, but the number of stings is very dangerous and they can kill a person unless they are treated quickly. Since the 1950s, around 1,000 people have died from attacks by killer bee swarms. A bee stinger is made up of two barbed darts that are held together in a sheath and connected to a venom gland. When the bee stings, muscles pushes the dart deep inside the victim's flesh. Africanized honeybees look very similar to European honeybees, but they are slightly smaller, less than one inch long. Like other honeybees, killer bees feed on nectar and pollen from flowers and produce honey from the nectar. Swarms of bees, such as this one in the eaves of a house, are less dangerous than nesting bees because they do not need to protect a hive or the growing lava inside it. Spreading disease. Some of the deadliest animals in the world are also the smallest. Many insects spread germs and diseases ranging from food poisoning, a short-term illness, to real killers such as malaria and sleeping sickness. Most diseases are caused by bacteria, viruses, or tiny single-celled creatures called protozoa. All of these things are parasites. This means that they feed and breed on other animals. Parasites need a way to move from one host animal to another. And when they do so, they spread disease. Many lethal parasites are carried from one host to another by insects. Body invaders. The female screwworm fly can lay up to 400 eggs in open wounds on humans and other animals. The eggs hatch into larvae that bury into the host's flesh and feast on it until they become full-sized maggots. The maggot saliva is toxic and makes smelly pus that attracts more flies to lay eggs. If the animal or person is not treated quickly, they become sick and die. In the past, millions of cattle were infected with screwworm flies 
but now they have been wiped out in many areas as governments have had sterile male flies breed to prevent the females from laying eggs. Biggest Killer Indirectly, the mosquito kills more people than any other animal by transmitting a deadly disease called malaria. There are 2,500 different species of mosquitoes, and they carry many diseases. But only the female Anopheles mosquito carries the parasites that cause malaria. Male mosquitoes feed on nectar from plants, but female mosquitoes feed on blood because they need the protein it contains to help them grow eggs. They can land on most parts of a person's body without him or her even realizing that they are there. If a mosquito has already drank blood infected with malaria, it infects more people each time it bites. This is because it injects a small amount of saliva into a person's skin when it bites in order to keep the blood flowing. Although malaria can be treated, more than 1 million people still die from the disease in Africa each year. A deadly bite. The CC fly is part of the same family as the house fly. It is tiny, but it is still able to infect half a million people living in Africa each year, 80% of whom will eventually die. The CC fly feeds on the blood of animals and humans. It often carries a single cell parasite called trypanosome that works its way into the body and attacks the blood and nervous systems of its victims. In humans, it causes sleeping sickness, a painful disease that ends in coma and death unless it is treated. Any human who is not treated for the disease then becomes a potential host for healthy flies. These flies become infected when they bite their human carrier and spread the disease even further. In animals, the CC fly causes a disease called Nagana. This disease kills 3 million livestock animals each year which has led to huge economic losses in 36 African countries, many of which are already desperately poor to start with. Sadly, although sleeping sickness is quite easy to treat, the medicine is very expensive. The World Health Organization estimates that it costs around 31 million each year to fight the disease. The common house fly eats any food that is found, spitting on it to turn it into a soupy liquid that it can mop up. The fly breeds on animal dung, rotten meat, and vegetables. It can carry millions of harmful germs both on and inside of its body. When a female Anopheles mosquito lands on a person's skin, she points her long proboscis at it. This acts as a sheath for tiny pointed probes called stylets that sink into the skin and enables her to draw blood. Schoolworm maggots take one week to mature on their host animal. By this stage, they look like small screws, the reason for their name. When they are around 0.6 inches long, they drop off of their host and form pupae on the ground. Flies emerge within three days. Fleas jump from one animal or bird into another and feed by sucking their blood. Fleas can spread deadly diseases such as typhus. The bubonic plague, which killed millions of people in Europe in the 1300s, was carried by fleas living on black rats. The CC fly is full of blood that it has just sucked from a human. 
If the fly is carrying a parasite, it can pass a deadly disease, such as sleeping sickness, onto every person it bites. The victim will think that he or she has the flu at first, but will then become very sick. Vampire bats. Simply mentioning vampire bats often concur with the nightmares. For centuries, this small blood-sucking bat has been connected in people's minds with the myth about immortal beings wandering through the night to suck the blood of the living. In fact, the vampire bat feeds mostly from pigs, cows, and horses. The main threat to humans come from the fact that the bat spreads diseases. Blood sucking bats. Vampire bats are found in northern Mexico and South America. They are the only bats in the world that feed on the blood of other animals. They need to consume half of their body weight in blood every night and they might die if they do not feed for two nights in a row. There are three types of vampire bats. The white wing and hairy leg vampire bats feed mostly from birds, but the common vampire bat feeds from mammals. Common vampire bats are about the size of a mouse with a wingspan of 12 to 14 inches. They live in colonies. There are usually around 100 bats in a colony, but numbers can be as high as 2,000. The bats roast during the day and search for food at night, flying about three feet above the ground looking for herds of animals. Stealthy techniques. When it has found an animal, a vampire bat uses heat sensors in its nose to find a good spot to feed from such as veins close to the skin. Unlike other bats, a vampire bat can move backwards and sideways like a spider, as well as run and jump. This agility makes it easier for it to attach itself to prey. The bat snips off fur and hair with its teeth and makes a cut in the animal's skin it then sticks its tongue into the wound and laps up the blood. The bat saliva produces anticoagulant, a chemical that stops the animal's blood from clotting and keeps it flowing. Another chemical in the bat saliva numbs the animal's skin so it does not feel anything. The bat feeds for up to 40 minutes. When feeding is done, it uses its strong back legs and thumbs to catapult itself back up into the air. Vampire bats do not harm animals by draining them of their blood, but they do spread disease, especially rabies, which kills hundreds of thousands of cattle each year. Also, very rarely, they feed from people who can also die from rabies. Another problem is that the anticoagulant is the bat saliva prevents wounds from healing properly, which leads to serious infections. The common vampire bat has long triangular incisors with sharp cutting edges. Using these, it makes a small wound around one inch deep in its victim's flesh. Vampire bats find their way around in the dark by echolocation. They make tiny sounds that bounce off of objects in their flight path. The bats pick up the echoes that come back to them and use this information to pinpoint where things are. Vampire bats roast in caves, crevices, and trees. They hang upside down in tightly packed groups with the bats on the outside facing away from the center. The bats make a lot of noise as they fidget and groom each other.
Vampire bats bite animals in places where it is hard to shake them off. They often feed from between the ears or eyes or on the neck, back, or shoulders. Humans are bitten on the tips of their fingers and toes their ears, their noses, and even their lips. Rats. Rats are one of the world's worst pests. Aggressive and highly destructive. They cause widespread damage. They eat around one-fifth of the world's crop each year. Pollute food, destroy electricity and telephone cables, and damage homes and properties. They also kill livestock, such as chickens, ducks, and even lambs. But most dangerous of all, they are known carriers of several diseases that can be fatal to humans. An adaptable and successful pest. The most common species of rats in Europe and North America is the brown rat, also called the Norway rat or sewer rat. It first came to Europe in the AD 1700s, brought from the east in sailing ships. Until then, the black rat was dominant in Europe, but the brown rat was larger and more aggressive. It drove the black rat off of its territory, leaving it to live on ships and in shipyards. The perfect habitat. Brown rats are voracious eaters and feed on anything they can, whether it is plant, animal, or garbage. In Asia, rats consume huge quantities of crops, eating millions of tons of rice and other grains each year. Rats are burrowers by nature. They build their nests under bushes or in deep burrow systems, but they are also good at climbing and can find their way into barns and warehouses where food or grain is stored. The brown rat's perfect habitat, however, is in the sewers of towns and cities. Here, deep beneath the ground, it is cool in the summer, warm in the winter, and there is a constant supply of food to eat. Not only are rats adaptable, they are also prolific breeders. The average female rat has four to six litters each year. If she breeds all year and all of her offspring survive and mate as well, she can produce 1,000 descendants during that time. Spreading disease. The bacteria that rats carry are much more dangerous than rats themselves. The bubonic plague also known as the Black Death, that spread through Europe in the AD 1300s was spread by fleas carried by black rats. The fleas bit the rats, which were infected with the plague bacteria. Then the fleas bit humans, who caught the disease. The Black Death eventually killed one third of the entire population of Europe. People have fought a constant battle against rats over the centuries. People have tried poisoning them, setting traps for them, using dogs and cats to catch them, and flooding their burrows. None of these methods have had lasting success, and the brown rat is now thought to be the most widespread mammal living on Earth. Brown rats are 16 to 18 inches long, including their rope-like tail. Their fur is rough and mostly brown, speckled with black on their backs. Brown rats' bellies are gray or a creamy white color. Rats are social animals that live in large organized colonies dominated by the largest males. When food is plentiful, for example, in a granary, large numbers of rats swarm all over it to feed. They are so greedy and numerous that they consume around one-fourth of the food produced by some Asian countries. Like other rodents, rats have sharp front teeth that carry on growing throughout their lives. 
Rats constantly gnaw on hard things such as lead pipes and cables in order to keep their teeth short and sharp. The black rat, also known as the ship rat or roof rat, is smaller and thinner than the brown rat. Its head and body measures around eight inches. Its feet and skull are a different shape than the brown rat's. And its fur is much smoother and more velvety. The end.